In the last episode, I continued working on the arc and I've done a bit of staging. So I've been working on the layout and determining which plants go where. So I have the foundation plants ready. And today I'm on my way to Bunnings because I would need more soil. I have used up my spare. I would need a bit more to fill up the pots and the bowls that I'm using in the landscape. So that's where I'm going. And here's what I came for. These are the 245 bag of soil. Things have changed since the baby. As you can see behind me, there are two car seats now. So it means I could fit less stuff in my car. I only brought home the things I needed. Look, no stray plants. I've been a good boy.
I've got all the plants in now. Well, at least the foundation plants. So this is after staging them yesterday and figuring out where the pot should go. I've also taken into consideration the sizes of the plants. So the smaller types went into the smaller pots. The large Zorro is at the large bowl. And this Princess Anne is also in the large pot. I have these two Echeverias in the smaller bowls. They, they might grow large but they, they can grow tall anyway. So I think, I think it's alright if I leave them in that size of a bowl. I want them to be comparatively smaller than the Zorro because the Zorro is in the larger pot. And the larger pot as you can see is above ground. So it has a bit of elevation to it. I want it to be more prominent so these two must support, must complement it and not try to overwhelm it. You might have noticed in the montage that I pulled out a pop from underneath a double delight. I didn't know there was something beneath beneath the leaves but it kind of makes sense because it seemed like part of the rosette was rather off balance and by that I mean that some of the leaves weren't looking the same as on the other side so it sort of gave me an indication that there must be something underneath. I'm going to keep this pop in one of the trays together with my seedlings no together with the leaf cuttings that's until I find the time to move it into a pot. The others are still here, the, the other cuttings. I might work on repotting them in one go. And back to the arc. Now that the plants are in, what I would need to do is to top dress. But first I have to make sure that the soil is up to the level that I want them. I might have to do a bit of mounding first. So I'll go through each bowl one by one. We are looking at the Princess Anne and it looks like some parts here on the right side are not elevated properly so I'll just grab one of my spades and just shift some of the soil around just make sure I form a, a mound this way when I start watering it later this week the, the, what, the excess water would run off towards the sides so I just have to make sure that I slope all of the sides. That should be good enough. I'll be doing the same now on this double delight. So I'll just push the soil towards the center. It's hard to see but that's what I'm doing. Next is the Zorro. It's the one in the largest bowl. I might need to do quite a bit of mounding here because this one has a fresh, this one has just grown, started growing roots. So it might be more susceptible to overwatering compared to the others. So it's mounted on all sides now. I can't figure out for the life of me what the name of this cultivar is. Because it has changed look several times throughout its life. But I don't know. Maybe someday I'll figure it out. I'm just waiting for it to flower because it hasn't flowered yet. And yes, I think I, I've done mounding it. I'm working on my Mary Butterfield now. I'm just using my fingers to push, push the soil towards the center. This should give it a nice small mound. And next is this morning light. The front is not mounted. 
and in case you were confused I'm currently behind it as for these blue waves I'm not sure if I should even bother because the leaves are the leaves are laying flat and it's covering the, the entire diameter of the pot so it's hard to get a vantage point although I can see that this part is not mounted so I just have to push the soil towards the center I think I'm done with it. Now that I'm done mounting, it's time to top dress the soil. Now that I'm done with the top dressing, I can finally shift over to the detail work. I would love to give you a top view of the whole thing, but unfortunately, as you remember, I've added a shade cloth. Unfortunately, this is what the top view would look like. It's quarter past 7 p.m. It's already a bit late. It's still bright here though because we have daylight savings time. But soon it would be dinner time and we wouldn't want to miss that. I'll be continuing work on the arc on another day. But for now, I'm satisfied with what I've done so far. And that's staging and layouting. I've already put in the, the pots and the, the foundation plants and top dressed them. So the next the next steps would be involving detail work. That's something that I would have to think about again. So I might give it a bit of time before I start working on it. I might be putting up another set of sketches. I would like to know what your thoughts are. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Do check out my socials. You can find me at Sariska Bates at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So the next part of my arc arc would be detail work. And that means I would be filling up the space between. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and just to give you a sneak preview of what I had in mind, I'm thinking of doing a tapestry in the, in the huge space. So I'm thinking of placing a large echeveria, maybe something that does not go really tall, maybe just something that spreads out. I have a few cultivars in mind and I'll show you in a bit. The top candidate would be this Echeveria Domingo. As you can see, it's now larger than the pot that it's in. So maybe it could enjoy 
having a bit more space. Another candidate would be something like, like this Orion. As you can see, it's pretty compact and a low-lying rosette. This is the look that I want. I kind of like this Golden Glow because it has a neon green color and it really stands out. So it might make very good contrast against all the reds and browns and the warmer Echeverias that I already have. This Capri is also another candidate. It has a pale Farina which makes it sort of glow against the others. So it might also be a good choice. But in any case, it's going to be sitting in the center here towards the edge and I'll, I'll create a ribbon around it. The ribbon might be composed of just rocks or maybe other smaller rosettes. We'll see. I'm pretty keen on using some rosettes, smaller echeverias or whatnot to fill up to create a pattern. So watch this space. Literally. <laughs> 